Um, just wondering if you could talk about how much of the film is based on your own experiences and what the initial um, kind of impetus was for making This Is England. I mean, initially, I'd sort of... I don't think I'd ever really contemplated or considered making a film about this period. Uh, why, I don't know, because it's obviously so visceral. The, when I started to look at the 80s, and not only about me being a skinhead, but the amount of different sort of youth packs, cults that were going on at the time. I look, you know, look around now, any shopping centre, and it's boring. You're like, you can just about spot a skateboard kid, and you can spot a chav, but there isn't the same separation amongst kids anymore. Um, it's all been a bit, you know, a bit sanitised and sterilised, and you sort of look back at where you were, and right from the sort of real super geeks that were wearing dealy boppers, pink, one pink sock, one green sock, through your new romantics, rockers, you know, gothics, skinheads, punk still around, mod second generation. That was just, you know, and, and in a place like Utopia, where there isn't enough, you know, enough people to be able to have, you know, one, you know, like where the skinheads were all mixed with the with the rockers and the rock, you know, everyone was all together at the discos, and so you realised it was a really incredible time when people wore their hearts on the sleeves. And so for me to have this this period in my own past, it's not until you become, I suppose, an adult that you start to become. Uh, if you like, it, well, you, you do look back at your life and you look back and realise that there's things that maybe you didn't realise had, had had an impact on you. And that was the first thing I'd ever really got, become, wanted to become a part of. And um, I was very much like Sean in the film, wearing a jumper with reindeers on and, you know, I was a, not, not a, a geek, but I was a bit of a nobody. And so going to school, you get shoved in the dinner queue, you know, you've got shaggy hair and all of that. And then the transformation to sort of seeing these skinheads one day in the shopping centre, you know, walking through the precinct and thinking, you know, they, they look like, almost like, you know, marines or something to me. They were unbelievable. They're so smart, yet, you know, so aggressive. And, and, and the, the crack that they had and the fact that they had this kind of F the state attitude, it was like, there's no jobs for these people. But, you know, somehow they're having the best possible crack. And I was drawn into that. And I also really was attracted to the girls with the haircuts and, you know, I actually, even though I was 11, I, you know, I did feel sort of, uh, you know, my loins, uh, you know, were, were awoken, I think, at that point. And, and, and it was that sort of attraction of, like, being somebody that people wouldn't mess with, being in a gang that visually, you know, I was really drawn to. Um, and obviously wanted to try and get off with my own skinhead girl and, and have one, even though I ended up with someone much more like Smell. Um, you know, it was, it was a time, it's, it's incredible time that I probably really never paid the attention to. And, and did this movement also give you a sense of belonging? Because one of the important things about the film, I think it's probably your most political film, um, but it doesn't feel like sloganeering because this movement gave people a sense of belonging who were kind of ostracised from, that the, the, they weren't given a voice. And this, the, the skinhead movement kind of gave them that, didn't it? With the music and the clothes and it gave them an identity. Was that also important? Yeah, it? I think there was a, especially in places like Utoxeter and smaller places, maybe in London and, and some of the bigger cities around the country, being a skinhead maybe was much more of a fashion thing. I don't know, you know it wasn't my experience, but being a skinhead in a place like Utoxeter was the only way almost that you could actually be something. Um, you know, and same with the fashion for a lot of people, you know, but for me, I was being told at school that if I didn't get, you know, eight O levels and I didn't get three A levels, that I was going to be sweeping streets. And the only place to work in your tops at the time was either at JCB in a factory or at the biscuit factory, you know. And so, and there was no jobs anyway. Three and a half million people unemployed. So you've got a lot of youth spilling out onto the street. And and being a skinhead was one of these where you could sort of say, actually, we don't want to be part of that. We don't care. There's no jobs. We're going to give you help. We're going to cause trouble. We're going to be a pain in the arse. It's almost like the one way that you can actually fight back. And, um, and you know, and as a kid who's possibly got, looks like you've got nothing ahead of you, uh, no job, no career, no future, to be able to feel that power was, you know, was obviously a really strong draw.